Okay, let's get started. Uh, everybody, can you see my screen? Yeah, we can. Yeah, so uh, the class project slide. Um, everybody, if you remember that at the beginning of the semester, I assigned you the uh, class projects. So here are the list of uh, seven group projects. Um, now, as you can see at the end, uh, by green colored, I have written down the date for your presentation. Uh, two dates have been assigned for this project presentation. One is November 12th and other one is November 17th, two dates. Now, first four projects will be presented on November 12th. And then the remaining three, number five, six, and seven, will be presented on uh, November 17th. Now, you know the group partner, for example, for on Salman, Alajmi, and then Ali, Bakhrabai. So those three are the partners. Uh, now, each presentation should be 20 minutes. So therefore, this will be group presentation. The four example, for the first one, there are the three presenters, three in a group. So you can divide how you will talk, like each of you six or seven minutes, or it can be more or less, uh, you will do that. So, and then, as I said, your project reports and PPT files are due on November 17th. This means by the second day. So the first group, once you will be presenting on November 12th, after the presentation, after the class, you can, upload, I will create Dropbox for both PPT file and then the project reports, you need to upload there after your presentation. And then in addition to that presentation file, probably you remember I told you that each of you in the group, not each of you, in a group report, you have to submit, uh, here are the, you know, instruction, I said minimum four page and maximum eight pages. MSOD file, 12-point uh, font size, Times New Roman, and single spaced, single column, single spaced. And then these are the minimum things that you need to put on that report, like introduction, uh, what is the methodology or any control algorithm, uh, what is the circuit diagram or any figure, any tables, anything, control diagrams, any discussion or what result did you get? And concluding remarks, an extensive list of references. What references did you follow? Any book, any article, journal article, any Wikipedia, whatever it is, any internet resource, all you have to report it here. So therefore, that length of that report should be minimum four pages, but maximum eight pages. So this means between four and eight pages you can write. So this should be the point. Similarly, when you will be uh, presenting your uh, projects, this should be the point, project title, and then brief abstract, introduction, methodology, circuit diagram, discussion, concluding remark. This will be the, you know, your presentation. Now, there is no limitation on the number of slides, presentation slides. You can use only 10 slides, you can use five slides, 15, 20, whatever slides you needed for your better presentation. So therefore you, you judge that. But then those points should be there, first title, and then these are the minimum points that should be in your presentation. And then these all are like very hard things, so very, very vital and very important. Right, first on artificial intelligence based control approaches for induction motor. So therefore, for this group, you will be looking induction motor control, but based on artificial intelligence, meaning that uh, application of fuzzy logic control, application of uh, neural network, or the application of genetic algorithm. Basically, application of those three techniques, genetic algorithm, fuzzy logic, and neural network, that is called the artificial intelligence. How we can control induction motor utilizing those artificial techniques, that is the meaning. So the second one, like uh, JC, Nathan, and then Joel Cox, transformer health condition monitoring methods. 
how can we understand that what's going on uh, inside the transformer? Uh, sometimes, for example, if it is too much heat is generated on the body, then there can be a sensor. Sensor will collect heat and it will send to a control, centralized control system. So that is one indication Then something is going on. Sometimes uh, in, in real practice, there is camera, a camera placed nearby the transformer and 24 hours it can take the picture. And by looking the picture, if you see that, okay, there is redness on the body of the transformer, meaning that something is going wrong. So those are called that uh, health condition of the transformer. But you have to monitor on uh, real time with the help of camera or sensor and then send to the control center. So there are what type of methods are available. So therefore, if you Google, you will find some information. That is the meaning. And then the uh, third one is uh, Chris, Joshua, and the Rian. Electric machines used to lift up objects. So therefore, you, you all know, for example, crane. Crane is one of the best example that can hoist or uh, lift up things. Uh, so therefore, that crane, crane, uh, what is that? Series motor. Series motor is used for the crane. So that, that is one of the example. So when I'm saying electric machine, meaning that which motors can lift up objects? So list those machines, what are their characteristics? How do they work, etc. That is the meaning. So not just one machine, there can be multiple motors that can uh, lift up objects. And then this one, Moses, uh, Tyler, and then Nolan, gravitational energy storage methods. Now, you, you all know like battery energy storage, battery can store, but this is not battery or supercapacitor or there is magnetic energy storage, thermal energy storage. Uh, there are other forms of storage, but in this case, what is the gravitational energy storage? So gravitational energy storage means, for example, you can uh, lift up some water or you can lift up an object and then later you can put it down. So this is called gravitational energy storage. So therefore, one of the uh, best example is uh, pumped hydroelectric project. In this case, uh, when the machine works as a pump, then it lifts up water. And when the same machine works as a generator, then water falls on the turbine. So similarly, what can be the other methods that can utilize the concept of gravity? So you, you know from the physics, what is gravity? So therefore, gravitational energy storage. And then the, the number fifth, say so Omar uh, Jared Joyner, electric, oh, so in this case, like you are only two, there are the other student, Jihad, uh, from the biomedical, but he uh, left this course. Uh, initially, he registered for the course and I listed him here, but he left the course. He does not need this course. So electric machines used to treat patients in hospitals. So in hospital, what type of electric machines are used? Whether it is generator or electric motor, what are those machines that are used to treat patient? So if you can list and how they work, what is their working principle? This is also a very hot thing, very hot topic. And then monitoring smart energy meter data on smart television screen, like Samuel, Patrick, and then David, uh, each of your house, you have the smart energy meter, and then it has that power consumption data. So if you log in to your account, going to MLGW account, then you can see how much energy you consume per day. Probably every one hour data is available there. For example, if you see September month data or October, until middle of October, you can see that every hour, how much energy you consume. So, but then you need to log in there, only then you can see. So what is the way, how we can see it on a smart television screen? Because this smart television has internet connectivity. So can you display that data on the smart television or, or on your cell phone 
or on a smartwatch. That is the meaning. And then the last one is Alexandria Mona and then Robert Mason, development of simulation model of induction generator considering variable terminal capacitor. So before we discussed uh, when we uh, studied induction generator motor chapter, that always there is a uh, capacitor connected at the end of the induction generator. But that generator, is, that capacitor is fixed. For example, 100 microfarad or 200 microfarad. But can you make it variable? That, uh, for example, some disturbance, some fault happened on the network, connected network to the generator. And then that fixed capacitor is not enough to maintain the stability, to maintain the power quality of the system. At that time, if you can make it vary, for example, increase the size 400 microfarad or use 500 microfarad, then the system will be stabilized. That's why it is called the variable terminal capacitor. So that what should be that model of that induction generator, what control can be needed so that during transient condition, during disturbance moment, that capacitor got changed and once the system returns back to the uh, original position, stable position, then again go back to the fixed capacitor. So therefore, uh, I mean, in real practice, that uh, capacitor, it is always connected to the terminal of the generator, and but that value is fixed. So and then you have to assume that there is a fault or disturbance in the connected network, and at that time, generator terminal voltage go very low, active power go very low. Now we have to support that. That's why you need a higher value of capacitor. So instead of connecting an additional or auxiliary capacitor or any other device, how about making that the same capacitor variable so that uh, different or changed value works. And then once the system stability come back, then again you go back to the original value. You have to go back to the original value, phased value. Otherwise, during normal condition, that uh, over value or the much higher value, again, deteriorate or send the performance of the generator. So that is the meaning. So uh, everybody, so please see your date. So after the class, uh, I'm going to send out an email uh, so that everybody can see this date. Just keep in mind that November 12th, the first four presentation, and then November 17th, the last three, five, six, seven, you have to present. And as I said, a duration of each presentation is 20 minutes, followed by a few minutes questions and comments. And then uh, at the same time, by November 17th, you have to uh, upload and submit these reports based on these criteria, like MSR, 12 font, Times New Roman, single spaced, single column. So, is everybody fine? Do you have any questions, comments? No, no questions for me. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So that probably everybody see because uh, you are only about a month away. Today is 20 and then I think last class is on 17. I think 17 is the last class for this semester. So accordingly, I have placed two days, 12 and then 17. Okay, so uh, I'm stopping this on. Now, just a moment, okay. Now, can you see this slide, the midterm exam two information? Yes, sir, we can see it. Yeah, <laughs> okay. So you see your midterm exam two will be held on October 22. This means in next class on coming Thursday. Uh, here you see I have written down the usual time, usual class time, 9.40 a.m. to 11.05. Uh, this is the class time, but likewise the uh, exam on. I think uh, you can start at nine and, and then until noon. Uh, the question number is the same, about seven, eight question will be asked. Uh, question pattern is the same. Of course, this time as Nathan Farrar was telling, uh, 
uh, I will be separating out the theory question and then <laughs> numerical problem. So you will not face any problem. Uh, and then in terms of the syllabus, <clears throat> you have to look class lectures 11 through 18. So 18 means today's class. The thing that we will be covering today, that is 18. So and then you will be looking all numerical problems, homework, and then uh, conceptual questions that we discussed or uh, that you answered in the class quiz, etc. And if you see the book chapters in terms of book, uh, chapter seven, eight, and nine. Chapter seven is about uh, synchronous generator, synchronous motor. Chapter eight was about uh, DC motor, DC generator. And currently we are on chapter nine, uh, single phase induction motor, uh, including universal machine that we will be covering today. So that's the syllabus. So therefore, if you see the uh, e-course where you will be following starting from class lecture 11 through 18, 18 is today. And then as I said, uh, I will make the exam available exactly at nine. You can start exactly at nine. And then the, your uh, deadline to submit the scanned PDF version on Dropbox is noon, 12 p.m. So therefore, again, like you are getting about full three hours, so you'll be fully fine. Okay, so now moving back, uh, and then I, I sent out an email, I think last night, although it is midnight, that I have uh, uploaded your grade for class quiz one. Did you see my email? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, the class quiz one. So I, I am going to discuss few things about that class quiz. And also uh, I uploaded the solution for homework set three and homework set four on eCourseWare under the tab homework. D did you notice that? Yeah, we saw that. Uh, okay, okay, great. So I, I have uploaded because we have the exam uh, one day after tomorrow, that's right. But you still, I think hopefully sometimes today you can see your grade for homework set three and four. That thing I could not complete is still, uh, but I have uploaded. I, I just looked, I, I, I was looking uh, homework set three. Uh, you have lots of mistakes, you have lots of mistakes. So I'm going to over those things. Um, most of you have lots of issues in calculation. It is three phase system, but you have assumed single phase system, etc. And delta y, you have lots of, uh, you, you have messed up in calculation, I noticed. Uh, but sometimes today you can see your dead. Okay. Uh, re regarding that class quiz, you know, so therefore most of you have answered properly, but uh, I did not get the proper answer for question number two. Yeah, that's the thing I'll be talking. Other things are fine. So everybody have written down what is the back voltage of a DC motor, that is fine. So like you all have written down that when DC motor is running or under running condition, uh, voltage is created on the armature coils which opposes the applied voltage, that's right. But the second part, how does the back voltage of a DC motor differ from that of a synchronous motor so you know, you have to tell that uh, in case of DC motor, the back voltage is always smaller than the applied voltage. You see, in case of DC motor, the armature vo applied voltage is always greater than or the back voltage is always lower than the applied terminal voltage. This means VT, terminal voltage, greater than EV, back voltage. But in case of synchronous motor, that back voltage can be greater than, can be equal, or can be smaller than the applied terminal voltage. That is the difference. So therefore, uh, if you see this one, can you remember that we were discussing uh, this slide uh, when we are learning the synchronous motor and synchronous generator. So the question is about synchronous motor. So don't look the bottom portion. The bottom portion is for synchronous generator. Look only the synchronous motor. 
effect of excitation on power factor. So because in case of synchronous motor, it is the AC motor, so power factor is involved. And power factor could be leading, could be lagging, could be unity. And depending on those three situations, there is over excitation, under excitation, normal excitation. So over excitation means that EA voltage, induced voltage is much higher. Meaning that, that is the back voltage. That induced voltage for motor, that is the back voltage. So back voltage is much higher. This means when the power factor is leading, the back voltage is greater than the applied terminal voltage. When it is lagging power factor, I mean, conclusion is that it was under excitation. Under excitation means low induced voltage. This means when the power factor is lagging, terminal voltage is greater than the back voltage or the back voltage is smaller than the terminal voltage. And when the power factor is one unity power factor, the normal excitation, normal excitation means applied voltage almost equal to the back voltage or back voltage equals to the applied voltage. Okay, but, but in case of DC motor, that this conclusion goes for sin, but in case of DC motor, because DC motor is applied voltage is DC, so there is no question of leading, lagging or unity power factor. So always applied voltage is greater than the back voltage or in other words, back voltage is always smaller than the applied voltage. But in case of synchronous motor, we have to tell that depending on the power factor, you know, the back voltage can be greater than, like in this case, can be smaller than or can be equal to the applied terminal voltage. That is the difference. So now you read, what is the back voltage of a DC motor? And how does the back voltage of DC motor differ from that of a synchronous motor? So both DC motor synchronous motor have that back voltage, but there is difference. So that just now I told you. So therefore, some of you have written down that back voltage of DC motor depends on speed. And then back voltage of synchronous motor depends on the excitation. I mean, that information is correct, but then you did not write down these things that the back voltage can be greater than, can be smaller than, or can be equal. So that, that was the meaning of that question. Everybody, could you follow me, what I said? Yes, yes. Yeah, and, and, and the, do, do you remember this slide that, that we discussed before? Like we, we, we drew even uh, three vector diagram. If you see the, all the um, class lectures, uh, it is on the synchronous motor chapter. So exactly this slide is available on synchronous motor chapter. And I drew three vector diagram for leading, lagging and unity power factor case. From there it is coming. And then again, so you know the bottom part is for synchronous generator. You see synchronous generator like exactly the opposite situation. When it is leading here over, but then for generator, for lagging case, it is over. And for lagging under, but leading here the under. And normal excitation is same. But so for to answer this question, you don't need to look that part because this is related to motor, not the generator. Okay, so th th that is one thing that you properly did not write. Uh, so therefore, when I have graded, uh, I have written the, uh, you know, brief feedback, like there are six questions, each question carries three, but number two and number six, I have given you the four credit. So therefore, like then it will be total 20. So therefore, number one, three, four, five is three. And then for number two and number six is four credit. Accordingly, I have graded. So therefore, you say many of you have got 18, 19, 17, etc. The main thing is that you did not write this song properly. You wrote something different. The, you, you wrote the first part, that is fine, but second part you wrote different thing. And the rest of the things are fine. And then for the first one, this is also like at least 50%, you did not fully write down the answer. What is the basic difference between a synchronous generator and a DC generator? 
So again, you just wrote that. I mean, the traditional common thing that synchronous generator produces AC and DC generator produces DC. I mean, of course, that is right. But I would recommend you to write down that on a secondary point. Number two point, first point you should tell that in case of a synchronous generator, the field rotates and then armature remains stationary. On the other hand, for DC generator, armature rotates, but field remains static. And then, then you can tell that the DC generator produces DC voltage and it is for the low scale application. Uh, maximum voltage could be up to 100, 1000 volt. In K, on the other hand, synchronous generator produces the AC voltage and it is used in power plant and voltage could be up to 13.8 kV or in some cases up to 20 kV. So therefore the first point should go in terms of whether the field rotates or armature rotates, which things is rotating and which things is stationary. That will be the first engineering point to tell the difference between synchronous generator and DC generator. So that, that's how you see, uh, you can see I have given you, I have cut your own credit or depending on situation, the two points I have cut there. So therefore many of you have written this 50% I noticed you have written properly and 50% you just wrote that simple thing. Or even you didn't write that thing that synchronous generator produces AC, DC generator produces this, you wrote completely different thing. So is, is everybody fine? So and then yeah, the, we're good. Yeah, and then the rest of the things are fine. Yeah. Oh, like for, oh, just, just one point. For number four, why should the field circuit of a DC motor never be left open? Uh, although you explained, but then you, you, many of you have told the different thing. You see, uh, if you see that equation that is speed equal to back voltage over K phi flux. So this means that the field circuit never open, field circuit opening means flux value is zero. Then speed will be infinity. But instead of writing speed will be tremendously high or very high, we have said the current will be very high. So you said like in that way, some of you, that if the field circuit is open, flux is open, and then the armature current will be very high. So you have to tell the speed will be very high. So, but still I did not give you the zero, I have given you the 50% credit. But uh, please check your answers that, that you submitted. You have said, some of you have said current value will be high. No, you have to tell the speed value will be very high. Treatment does not high or ideally it will be infinity. Okay, so now I'm going to that other things. Just a moment. Okay, uh, now everybody come back to that. Can you see homework set three? Yes. Yes, sir, we can see it on the screen. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. So therefore in this homework, I was, although still I did not complete grading as I said, but I noticed as looking your answers, there are a lot of mistakes, like almost for everybody, there are at least few calculation mistakes. Um, so therefore look here, I have done the solution. A three phase Y connected synchronous generators supplies unity power factor load at 4.16 kV. If the synchronous reactance voltage drop is 262 volt per phase and the resistance voltage drop is 25 volt per phase, then what is the percent regulation? So therefore, you all know that uh, regulation mean, voltage regulation means no load voltage minus full load voltage over the full load voltage and then taken as a percentage. So now, as you can see this one, the unity power factor load at 4.16 kV, this is given in terms of three phase voltage. But then other two quantities, see, if the synchronous reactance voltage drop to, that is per phase, and then resistance drop is also per phase. So therefore, we have to convert this on 
in part-phase system as well. So, but because this is the Y-connected system, three-phase Y-connected, so the phase voltage will be 4.16 kV over root three. So whatever the magnitude is, you have to do that. And after that, you see that, I, th I noticed some of you have just added this too, but you see this is the synchronous reactance voltage drop. And this one is the resistive voltage drop. And the, you are dealing with the unity power factor. So in case of the unity power factor, if you uh, draw the vector diagram, see this one, this here is that solution for number one. Everybody see? This is voltage, terminal voltage, but then current will also be on the same line, right? Because that is the unity power factor case. And then at first I drew that VT, this magnitude was power phase that 4.16 kV over root three. As you can see that is, and then after that, the IAR drop, which is that, you know, the resistance voltage drop is 25 volt per phase. So this means that is on the same line. That's why IAR 25 volt. But then I noticed that uh, some of you have, you added the 26 volt here on the same line. It is the reactance voltage drop. See the statement? Reactance voltage drop is 262 volt per phase. Reactance. So therefore, reactance means the 90 degree phase shift. So that's why this voltage will from here upward 262 volt. Then now this is your final vector and this is that E naught. That will be the no load voltage. So that's why E naught then root over this voltage I converted into volt plus 25 volt, this is square, plus then this is square. Just I'm taking the magnitude. So, and then I got 2440.88, and then percent regulation E naught, which is this no load voltage, minus what was the terminal voltage, meaning that this magnitude from here to here, this one. So 4.16 kV over root three, that will give you 2401.78. And then finally, after dividing that one, uh, making percentage 1.63. So this should be the correct answer. I mean, approximately 1.63 or 62. And so, so is everybody fine with this one? Yeah, looks good. Okay, okay. The, the, I am showing that where you made mistakes, many of you, uh, the, this is fine. Uh, yeah, I, I quickly noticed some of you like, it. this looks fine. And then come back to the second one. Okay. Everybody read this one. A two pole, 50 hertz, three phase synchronous generator has 100 turns in each phase coils and produces 3000 volt while the stutter winding factor is 0 0.95. If 10 ampere current flows through the field coil having an inductance of 0 0.200, then calculate the number of turns in the field coil. So now, as you can see, the first sentence, this is related to synchronous three-phase synchronous generator. And clearly the uh, voltage is mentioned, 3000 volt. Uh, and uh, what else given? The number of turns in its phase coil is given, frequency is given, and the winding factor is given. So therefore, at first, what you need to do Everybody see, first I wrote down that induced voltage equation for power phase system E 4.445 Fn and then Kw. This is the winding factor, which is 0 0.95, number of turns 100, uh, frequency 50 Hertz, phi is unknown, phi was not given. And this E was given 3000. So then from there I calculated phi, this waivers. And then the next question was that uh, if 10 ampere current flows through the field coil having an inductance of 0 0.200, then find out the number of turns in that field coil. So therefore this one is with regard to that field coil, not the armature coil, field coil. So therefore that relationship is L n phi over i. So from there you find out number of turns 
So here like uh, 14.03, so I, I noticed some of you have made it 15, that, that is okay. Uh, many of you who have just put 14, that is also fine. Or you just kept it 14.0 something, that, that is okay. But I noticed some of you have got 12 or 16, that I, I don't know, maybe you messed up somewhere here. Uh, so uh, as I said, still I did not grade. I will be looking again carefully for each of you and then I will be ready. So you're saying if we get a non-whole number, we should just round it to the nearest whole number? Yeah, yeah, that, that is because it is, you see the just number of turns, or number of turns actually cannot be the fraction. So you round it up to the nearest number. So I think uh, it was 14.02 something. It was actually pretty close to 14. But I noticed some of you have, you have used the 15, but I assume that that is fine because there are fraction. But uh, because it was very close to 14, 14.0 something, I think, uh, when we used calculator. So it is better to put 14. But those you have put 15, that is also okay. Thank you. Yeah, yes, great. So everybody then, as I, as I said that I already uploaded, you know, this on, on eCourseWare and then you have your hard copy with you, I believe. So you match and then you be ready uh, for the exam to be held day after tomorrow. I mean, I will be uh, posting the grade, so you don't worry about the grade, uh, but you, you see that where you made mistake and you match with your hard copy, see, and then practice and then learn the things. Okay, so the moving forward, the next one. Yes, there is many mistakes in this case, I noticed. Okay, first of all, everybody read problem number three. Everybody say, still we are discussing uh, homework set three. Okay, a three phase, 4.17 kV, 60 hertz, Y connected, cylindrical rotor, uh, synchronous generator, has a leakage reactance of 2.2 ohm per phase, and the winding resistance of 0 0.1 ohm per phase. If the load connected to the generator is 950 kVA at 0.85 lagging power factor, then determine the air gap voltage. So the, the first of all, so I have written down that air gap voltage. So air gap voltage means without, without considering the armature reactants. Keep in mind, air gap voltage means this is not the induced voltage. This is not the induced voltage. If you subtract the armature reactants drop from the induced voltage, that constitutes the air gap voltage. So that's why you see the equation, air gap voltage is VT, terminal voltage, plus the drops, I, RA, RA is that armature resistance or winding resistance plus JXA. XA refers to that leakage reactants or the self reactants of the armature coils. But if you see in the problem, there is XAR, armature reactants. And if you add that drop, then that will be your induced voltage, internal induced voltage. That is the difference between air gap voltage and induced voltage. So anyway, so this is the induced, sorry, the air gap voltage equation. First I wrote down, and then <coughs> I can see all the factors. This VT, everybody see, this VT is this one, 4.17 kV. But then this is the power phase equation. This equation refers to that power phase system. That's why it is the Y connected, the VT will be 4.17 over root three. So here you see, I am showing that calculation. First I did that here. And then here you need, you are getting these two things, those are given. RA is this on 0 0.15 ohm power phase. And leakage reactance is 2.2 ohm power phase. You see, these are the clearly power phase. That's why that E phase equation, I mean, Erga voltage equation, VT, all you have to consider in perfect. So therefore, IA, JXA, those things I have put it here. Now you need to get the IA. And that IA, now everybody see here, I noticed here you made mistake. IL is 
S over root 3 real. S is the apparent power, but three phase apparent power. This is the three phase system. So therefore, here first you will be getting the, uh, the line current, S root 3 real. So S is that 950 kVm and root 3 and then the VL is again that on 4.17 kV I converted into volt ampere and you see that is the IA because this is the Y connected system so the uh, the line current and phase current is the same so that is the IA and then power factor is given 0 0.85 lagging so I calculated theta and that because this is lagging so now I am substituting the IA here on 31.53 angle minus this one. You have to put the minus sign because this is lagging. So I noticed that what is the mistake here? Some of you have just, you divided this by voltage. You did not put the root three. So you got the higher value here and you got completely the different result. Very high value here, you have 8,000 or 7,000 or something. And then that, that is one mistake that uh, some of you have, you, you did not divide by root three. Probably you assume that this is the single phase, I don't know. And then other category, I have noticed, some of you have, you have then multiplied this on here you look, by the power factor value 0 0.85. So you, when you have multiplied by 0 0.85, then again you got higher value, not this one. But then that is wrong. Everybody see, when you multiply, if you multiply this on power factor, meaning that, that is getting your kilowatt value, 950, 950 multiplied by this number, it will be kilowatt. But then in that case, I mean, you can do that. You are right, you can convert into power, that is fine. But then what is the power equation? Power is root three VLIL cosine theta then you have to divide by that power factor then the result will be the same everybody do you understand what i am saying that everybody see this is the apparent power equation here the apparent power is given 950 kv so accordingly apparent power is root 3 vlil but what i noticed that some of you have you have multiplied the numerator by 0 0.5 meaning that you converted this one into power. That is fine. But then you did not divide by power factor. You see, what is the real power equation? V equal to root three VLIL cosine theta. So therefore, if you convert this KVA into kilowatt, then you have to consider that equation. Then you have to write IL is V over root three VL cosine theta. Then you have to divide cosine theta so then cosine theta, cosine theta will be canceled. Still, you will be getting this number. So therefore, I have noticed two type of mistakes here. One mistake, you did this thing, but you don't divide. And in other group, you multiplied by this power factor, but then you didn't divide by the power factor. That is the wrong thing. And then uh, if you have those who have properly followed this one, so you should be getting this result approximately. If you see your hard copy that wire you made mistake. So main thing is here. Everybody could you follow me? Is this fine? Yes, I can say for. Yeah, so therefore I am referring to those, those who have multiplied by 0 0.85. So therefore see what I am telling that when you have multiplying by 0 0.85, meaning that you converted into active power, real power. But then what is the real power equation? This means you are assuming this is P, not the apparent power, root three VLIL cosine theta. So then where is your cosine theta in the denominator? You did not show that thing. So you just multiplied by power factor here. That's why your, this number got increased. Consequently, you got completely different result, totally deviated result. So therefore you see your note and then you on Okay, then moving forward, see this one. Again, I noticed there is mistakes here. I mean, I quickly looked at least at 
10, 12 uh, thing, and then I found a lot of mistake. A three phase, 11 KB, 60 Hertz, 50 MB, Delta connected, cylindrical rotor, synchronous generator has an armature reactance of 2.5 ohm per phase. Okay, in this case, this is the armature reactance, keep in mind. So therefore this means, uh, this will be in this case, internal generated voltage, including this one. The armature resistance is negligible, meaning that RA value is zero. And assume that the generator delivers full load current at the rated voltage and 0.85 lagging power factor. Then determine the following, the rated load current, internal generated voltage, and voltage regulation. So therefore, again, everybody see, the very first question, rated load current, the similar to the previous problem. Again, this is 50 MB S value, and then root three BL. So this is the ampere. You see? So this will be the answer. Then again, in this case, I noticed some of you have, you did not divide by root three. You just divide this one completely. You got very high value here. So that is the wrong thing. And then, and then, I mean, two, two type of mistakes you have made here. In one hand, you didn't divide by root three, so you got very high value, and that high value you used here for IA. You see, after that, look, this one delta connected. Everybody see, first line, it is delta connected, not Y connected. So therefore, for delta connected, you know from three phase circuit concept. So the phase current, will be this divide by root three. So you have to divide this number by root three, then you should be getting this one, 15, 15.15. So this will be the actual value. Therefore, if you see your hard copies, right now if you have with you, you see your answer. What you did, you did not divide, and then again, you did not divide by root three. So directly use this one. So, I mean, you would be right, uh, that value assuming that it was the Y connected. Of course, you did not divide root three, that is the wrong thing. But then again, you did not divide by another root three. So therefore, see your note, and that is on mistake. And again, the, there is power factor and lagging. So then minus angle. Yeah. And oh. then. Is, is anybody saying anything? And finally, there's, yeah. uh, uh, hello, so uh, please mute your phone. So I'm hearing the noise. She's very not hello, hello, so so please, everybody. Did. I think it's not, yeah, it was Nolan. Oh, uh, okay, okay. I see. So then, then everybody see the calculation, uh, the VT. In this case, you see, this VT, it is 11 KV. So we did not divide by root three because this is delta connected. In case of delta connection, line voltage and phase voltage is the same. Therefore, see, we did not divide. So therefore, I noticed that uh, many of you have did this on properly, you did not, but then you did not divide this on by root three, this number. So the double mistake here, you did not divide, in addition, you did not divide root three. And then again, the third mistake, again, you multiplied by this one by power factor, but then you did not divide by the power factor. So therefore threefold mistakes just here. And I noticed quickly. That's why you got completely uh, the different result. Anyway, so if you see, and then all the calculation, it should be 13,388.37 approximately and an angle is 13.91 degree. And then voltage regulation, because you got different result, your voltage regulation value is completely different. You got 50, 60, 80, something like that you got, I noticed. So therefore this should be 21.7 on percentage. So that is everybody fine with this one? Therefore, I think uh, you gave before to everybody, so you did this part, your process is fine, but like you messed up here. Yeah. I don't know why you did not uh, divide by root three. It is mentioned the three phase system. Probably you thought that uh, it is part phase system, this equation, so it is part phase, but this is the three phase. This rating is for the three phase. 
this rating is not for the single batch. So that, that's the mistake here. Okay, so then moving forward, the uh, question number five. So here I think I notice uh, again the uh, lots of mistake as well. A three phase 600 MB, two fold 60 hertz synchronous generator has a rated current of 160 kilo ampere and feeds via a one to two transformer, a three phase 750 hertz power Y connected induction motor that has a full load efficiency of 90% and a lagging power factor of 0.75. Then to improve the power quality of such a load, a synchronous condenser is connected at the load terminal that ultimately makes the power factor of 0.85 lagging. What is the value of the reactive power that is provided by the synchronous capacitor? And also what is the motor terminal voltage? So therefore, I was quickly looking like your both results are not correct, both the reactive power and motor terminal voltage. Again, you see for the last part, motor terminal voltage, the main issue is that on, yeah, sorry. Okay, see the last part first. This is the equation, apparent power, is root three VLIL, that you did not use. I noticed you did like VL that 600 MV over the voltage and you got completely different result. Consequently, your motor terminal voltage is much higher. I think 7.5 or something you did because you didn't divide by the root three. So once again, because this is the three phase system. So all is AC equal to root three VLIL and then you put uh, this is 160 kilo ampere. So then your VL value is 2.17 kb. And then the there is transformer between the motor and the generator. So everybody see synchronous generator and that synchronous generator is feeding via a one is to two transformer. This means transformer side voltage is twice than the generator side voltage. And then induction and motor is connected on the secondary side of the transformer where the winding is the turn number of turns is twice so that's why the voltage will be two times that is the motor terminal voltage just multiply this number okay and then i, I don't know why you got the different result here i noticed you did not get 163 kilowatt so therefore look this one this will be the diagram, you know. This is the power factor improvement, but with the help of synchronous condenser instead of the capacitor, with the help of synchronous condenser or synchronous capacitor. So I'm drawing that picture in the previous or the old picture and then the modified one. So therefore, this is my keyword, meaning the original. This is my active power or real power. And this is, I'm assuming, this portion was provided by the synchronous capacitor. Therefore, my new Q is this amount with respect to this new or small triangle. Now, you have to find out what is that feed, active power of the motor. Therefore, you see what is given? 750 horsepower Y connected induction motor. This means 750 horsepower is the output of the induction motor. But this is that mechanical output power. And then motor has the efficiency 90%, as you can see 90%. So therefore you have to know what is the input to the motor, that thing you have to find out, not the output. So therefore efficiency is output over input, efficiency 90%. So your input power is, 621.667 kilowatt. That is the value I have written down in here. And then uh, previous or the old lagging power factor was 0 0.75. And then you are uh, increasing to 0 0.85 lagging. So therefore 0 0.75, I have written cosine theta old value. And then I'm calculating tangent theta old. And then cosine theta new is the new value. 
improved value or the changed value and then tangent theta nu and then now i am calculating what is that q cap this one is q old reactive power old minus reactive power nu so therefore i am what i am using q over phi that is the tangent theta old and then this q over phi that is the tangent theta nu so exactly i am putting those things and then i am getting 163 kilowatt but i noticed you got different result so i i, I don't know how completely different thing you got so did you all not follow this thing this process Even, even I noticed your input power is different. Yeah. Now, not this one. Well, but see this one? This is. I think I noticed some of you have you used this one as the input power here. 750, you multiplied by uh, 746, and that number you have put here. That is, that is wrong. You see? This is the rating of the induction motor. So, because this is motor, this is the set output power. That's why it is expressed in terms of horsepower, shaft output power. But then here, <coughs> this Q consumption, this is the reactive power consumption by the motor from the line. The same thing here, you see that that P will be the input power to the motor, not the output power. Because motor takes input power and provides the mechanical power. Therefore, I mean, some of you have you have used 750 horsepower by multiplying 746 here. That is that is wrong. That is the output power. Keep in mind. So, what is the input power? That's why there is full load efficiency 90 percent, and we have to use this one. And then you will be getting input power to the motor. That will be the active power. That that will be the value. Here. So that's why I, I noticed here this number is different and then again consequently this is different and again you did not divide by root three that's why you got completely different thing so everybody could you follow me yes 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 does anybody have any question confusion i think if anything i think i may have done the calculation and gotten confused into it but the yeah. diagram you understand. Uh, okay, so, so now do you understand the diagram? Yeah. Everybody understanding the diagram? Like, I have drawn two. You know, for, this is first one. This, 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 this is the original triangle. Therefore, you see from here to here, this is the Q axis, but perpendicular axis. This is mean this is the reactive power Q word with respect to the world power factor. And this is my P value. So I explained to you how I got that P value. This is the input for this number. And then because uh, you are changing the power factor, you are increasing 0.75 to 0.85, meaning that th this was the original power factor angle theta volt, but then you will be getting the new and it will be of course is smaller than this one because cosine theta, value has increased so angle should be smaller so accordingly i'm guessing i'm assuming this is the amount so therefore this portion is provided by that synchronous capacitor and then this portion is my new q so now i have two triangle one is that original or the old triangle and now this is my new triangle so therefore in both triangle you look this p value is the same which is this one so therefore, according to this, just apply the trigonometry, like sine, tan, cosine, <laughs> that's all. Therefore, with respect to the big triangle or original triangle, you see Q over phi. This means this over phi, perpendicular over base, that will give you tangent theta. So exactly I'm doing this one, you see. Q over phi, this is 621.666, this amount phi is tangent theta world with respect to big triangle. And this is my tangent theta world. And then this is the Q nu. Again, the same thing. This portion over this one is tangent theta nu. And I calculated tangent theta nu. 
and then I got Q old Q new, just subtract. So this minus this, and this is my Q capacitor. That's all, approximately 163. So is this fine? Everybody is okay? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Okay, okay. So therefore, therefore I, I, I noticed, so I, I don't know. I mean, I think some of you are fine with this one, but I, I don't know why you did not divide by root three. That, that, that does not make sense to me. I mean, not only this one, even first and second, third problem always, why are you assuming this is the single phase? You are simply dividing this one by this one. I don't know why. Okay, so therefore everybody please look carefully and that is the reason before making grading, your, of course you will be getting good grade and I will be grading. It will be available today, but everybody please ahead of time we start looking and I uploaded on eCourse once again you see after the class where you made mistakes, look point by point and then learn and make practice. Again, you will be facing similar problems in the exam on day after tomorrow. Okay, so now I am going that the fourth one, <clears throat> uh, that homework set four. Okay, everybody, can you see homework set four? Can you see? Yeah, we, we can yes. see. Yeah, okay. So again, uh, just quickly looking, but still, uh, so I did not complete grading. That will also be available to you today. Um, but I, I noticed that this one is better than the third one. Yeah, uh, I found you all got the correct result in most cases. So just quickly going over this one. Uh, the armature current of a short sun compound generator is 30 ampere. If the series field resistance, armature resistance, and sun field resistances are 0 0.5 ohm, 0 0.9 ohm, and 5 ohm respectively, then calculate the generator terminal voltage and consider the voltage is 130 volt. So therefore, first you have to, because short sound compound generator, the very first task is draw a uh, diagram for short sound. This is the short sound compound generator, as you can see. So this is the induced voltage here, 130 volt. And this is the armature resistance. IA current is flowing and this is the series field resistance is RAC. Uh, IAC is current and that is the same current that is the load current. Here is the terminal voltage and the sound field resistance is R. So therefore, always I recommend you to draw this one. Then that will help you easily. You can see what is given, what is not given rather than just uh, remembering, you know, okay, this looks like the circuit, just to draw the diagram and keep in front of this is not mandatory but this is for your easiness for uh, calculation purpose and then you see i have written all values i was uh, 30 ampere ra rac rf those values were given so the question not what is the uh, terminal voltage what is the vt value so therefore <clears throat> first i am writing down that vt equation everybody see the vt is that induced voltage here minus this drop IARF uh, minus. So this means when you are doing EA minus IARF, this up to now, you are getting the voltage between this point and this point. But then question is, what is the voltage here? This means again, there is another drop that you have to subtract, which is RAC minus RS. And then now see what is given, what is not given. So E value was given on 30, then I, it was also given 30 multiplied by 0 0.9 then minus uh, IAC, RAC. So this thing. So now what I got, uh, first time calculating the field current. What is the amount of field current? Because that 30 ampere, that is the total current, and that is divided into two parts. One portion is going through the series field towards the load, and then the remaining portion is going to the field. So here I am calculating the field current. So therefore, field current means 
if you know the voltage between these two point and divide by this one, that will give you the filter. So that's why again this portion, like E minus I R, and I got twenty point six. So now I C I have yeah, the load current nine point four ampere. That's why for I C I have put it nine point four and R C value was this one zero point five. So the result is ninety eight point three volt. So this should be the result. So I quickly noticed that uh, many of you have done this one properly. So that is fine. Everybody is fine with this one? For the most part, yes. Okay, okay. So then once again, after the class, uh, you please look like I already uploaded this thing. So then folks, open your uh, homework, hard copy and then you match where you made mistake, et cetera. Um, could, could we not use current division there? That's what I tried to do. Okay, and then did you get the same result? No, I got something different. Um, I got something different for the, uh, for the currents. Okay. I did, so like for, um, for, the, I, what is it? Yeah, so for IF, um, I did 30 times 5 over 5.5. 5. Okay. Um, oh, it's, that's why, because I did 5.5 5 instead of... No, you're supposed to add them, so that should have been fine. So, yeah, 30 times 5 over 5.5, 5, and that gave me, like, 27 instead of 20. Okay. Okay. So that was just straight current division. Okay. Uh I mean, I, I understand. So although like it looks like that these two are the, the parallel circuit, but then in real practice, you see, there will be something because it is going ultimately to the load circuit, you know? And then you don't know that what will be connected to the load. I mean, here, although it is not given. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, yeah. Therefore only please uh, think this circuit. Yeah, okay. All right, thank you. Okay, okay, welcome. Okay, so oh, I did number two, just a moment. Okay, everybody read number two. Uh, a 0 0.7 kilowatt DC sun generator has a load current of 12 ampere and a sun field current of six ampere, armature resistance of 0 0.95 ohm, sun field resistance of six ohm, frictional and windage loss of eight watt, then determine the efficiency. So th therefore you all know the basic definition of efficiency is output to the input, ratio of output to the input. So, but input means output plus all the losses. That is the thing. So therefore in this case, for this DC generator, this is the rated output. So this is the output. So then output over input. So this thing will go numerator and in the denominator, this output plus all the losses. So therefore armature resistance, there will be loss here. Sun field has resistance, there will be loss there. And then this frictional and wind is loss. So that is also the loss. So therefore in the denominator, what you have to do? That output plus all the losses. Now to calculate the losses, uh, sun field current is given. So therefore this is I square multiplied by sun field resistance. Then if you know that what is the armature current, load current is given, and then armature current is squared multiplied by this one. That is the armature resistance loss. So therefore two loss plus this is the frictional and windage loss. You need to sum up this as well. Then you will be fine. So uh, let's have a look at this one. I think, uh, the result will be 56.8% approximately. So you see, I'm drawing that one. And uh, here you see, I'm calculating IA square RA. What is that one? IA current is 18 ampere. So I got 307.8 watt. And then field loss is this one. So therefore, as I was telling, if you see output by output plus losses, so output is, I converted into what? It has 0.7 kilowatt and that I summed up all the losses. And then I got 56.8 percentage. 
Did you all get this number? I, I noticed uh, quickly some of you have got 56.8%. So is this fine? Oh, yeah, this is fine. Okay. Paper once again, everybody see. I mean, you know this thing, and uh, just look the calculation and uh, draw the diagram and calculate the current, and then you should be getting this result. Okay. Now this on number three. <clears throat> uh, calculate the terminal voltage and total number of armature conductors of a sound DC generator if the flux path pole is zero point two safety speed is 1800 rpm and the number of parallel paths is the same as the pull number consider the generated voltage is 150 armature current 50 15 ampere and the armature resistance is 0 0.9 ohm so here the question is to what is the terminal voltage vt and what is the total number of armature conductors meaning that that capital g so those are the two questions so you want to see number three I drew that one. Uh, this is the I R A. This is the IL, and this is the field current. This is the VT. So VT is EA minus I R A. EA minus I R A. So therefore, that EA is given uh, 150, then I R A. So this result is on 30.5, on 36.5 volt and then total number of conductors should be 25. This is the EA equation, you know, that induced voltage equation for DC generator and EA value was given, other things were given. Number of poles parallel path was the same, that's why I have written P over P, I mean that will be cancelled one over one. So ultimately you should be getting Z value 25, number of conductors. So did you all get the same number? Yes, sir. Okay, and then voltage value is the same? Okay, I am assuming that you got that one. I did. Uh, sorry, what do you say? I did. Ah, okay, okay, great. Okay, therefore everybody, uh, those look in case you have made any mistakes, um, as I said, it's still I have not graded, I'll be grading. So beforehand I am showing you that what mistake you made. Uh, this on number four, calculate the generated voltage of a series DC generator that has a terminal voltage 150, brass voltage drop of 2 volt, load current of 15 ampere, armature resistance 0 0.9 and series fuel resistance of 5 ohm. Oh, here one thing I think I did not um, discuss before, I think I forgot to tell you, brass voltage drop 2 volt because you see always uh, we are showing this picture even in each diagram you see this rectangular or the square box indicate the brass so therefore in real practice those brasses have some uh, losses those represent very very small resistance actually so brass contact loss it is called so typically on board sometimes 1.5 volt or less than on board but there is drop so sometimes it is mentioned, sometimes it is not mentioned. Some, some books neglected, but this book consider it. That's why in the problem when I mentioned two volt, so that is considering that uh, total brass voltage drop. You just need to take into account that. In the problem, if you see this is not mentioned, then you didn't, don't need to do anything. But if you see it is mentioned, then take into account that. So now based on that, this is the uh, series DC generator. So therefore everybody see, I have drawn a series uh, DC generator. So this is the terminal voltage. Series generator means it has only the series field. It does not have that sound field. And this is A and this is R. So I current is flowing, but this is the same current to the field and then even the load current. So this means IA, IAC, and then IL. All three are the essentially the same current. So you see that VT is EA plus IA 
these two drop ra plus plus brass voltage drop just you add that up so in the problem that is that the total uh, brass voltage drop as i said if it is not mentioned then then don't do that you don't need to do anything so therefore uh, you should be getting 240.5 volt so everybody got this number yes sir i got okay great okay the last problem i think this one uh, in a power network there is a 60 hertz two fold single phase synchronous generator that feeds a 3 hertz power four fold single phase induction motor so in this case you see this is clearly the single phase so you don't need to use the three phase equation and if the slip of the motor is 5% and the shaft torque of the generator is 1.5 times that of the motor then calculate the generator output power in horsepower so first of all i mean start from here you need to find out the generator output power so therefore generator output power means generator torque multiplied by the speed torque multiplied by the speed so therefore you will be using the very first line 60 hertz two fold single phase generator so see, this is synchronous generator so the synchronous speed is 120f over p so from these two information frequency and pole number you will be getting the synchronous speed but that will be in rpm revolution per minute then you convert into radian per second that is your speed so and then output power is torque multiplied by that speed now now you have to get that torque but what it says it says shaft torque of the generator is 1.5 times that of the motor this means if you know what is the motor torque then you multiply by 1.5 that will be the generator torque so therefore that torque multiplied by the speed in radian per second will give you the generator output power that is what you need to do and then it says convert into hp so you just need to divide by 746 so and then the how you will get the shaft torque uh, for the motor therefore for the motor specifications are given three horsepower four pole single phase motor this means motor output power is given so therefore output power divided by the rotor speed that will give you the induction motor torque but then how you will get the rotor speed slip value is given and pole number is given and of course uh, that is the same frequency because the generator is connected to the motor system it has the same frequency frequency is not different so therefore based on that so everybody see first i drew as you can see like always i, I myself draw a simple schematic that helped me to properly understand that how is the system working and then you will get the answer that what to do so therefore this is synchronous generator it has shaft and uh, it has the shaft speed and it has those two specifications 60 hertz and two pole and then current is flowing uh, to the motor so this is the induction motor it has shaft it has the shaft speed it is rotating so these are the specification for the induction motor four pole slip five percent and three horsepower rating now as i said that ultimately you have to um, calculate the what is the generator output power so generator output power as i said what is the torque and multiplied by what is the speed that will give you the electrical output power so that's a power generator first time calculating the omega in radian per second so you all know 120 by p and then 2 pi over 60 radian per second finally i got 377 radian per second approximately and then now as i said i have to get the uh, torque of the generator which is 1.5 times of the induction motor now come back here so i am writing for motor the slip equation ns minus n r over ns and uh, slip value is 5 percent given so 
sorry, first I am calculating the NS <coughs> to use in this equation. So NS is 120 F over P. So the pole number is four for uh, motor. Keep in mind, this pole is for this generator. This pole is not for the motor. Motor has different pole, four pole. So I got 1800. And then now I am using this equation for motor. Slave value 0 0.05, five percent. And I got 1710 RPM. And that give me 179.07 radian per second speed. And then I am calculating motor torque. So three horsepower, you see, three horsepower, that is for the motor, shaft output power. So from there, I am calculating induction motor torque. That one divided by this number, Newton meter. I got 12.5 Newton meter. And then I am done. So I know uh, for generator, speed is this one. So this multiplied by 1.5 times of that one. So that's why 12, I'm writing generator output voltage, 12.5 multiplied by 1.5, then multiplied by this number, 377. Then, then that result divide by 746. So I got 9.48 horsepower approximately. So this will be the uh, correct result approximately you might get four seven four six etc or you might write 9.5 that is fine but this will be the result did you all get the same result generator output power in hotspot is it the same yeah i did okay so does anybody have any questions? I, I, I'm not hearing maybe some uh, issue is going on. Does anybody have any question? So is everybody fine? No, it seems okay. Okay. Okay, so therefore, I think this is a quote. So there are five questions. So therefore, everybody, you see that uh, where you might have made mistakes. Uh, and then uh, by today, you can see your grade. But in the meantime, after you start preparing for the exam, you will look and I think these two homework and then uh, class short questions and then uh, numerical problem that we discussed. Uh, I think. Uh, or you don't have uh, time. So, uh, although I had the plan, just a moment. Where is my class? Just a moment. Ah. So I think uh, I told about this one, and then uh, I had the plan to go ahead a little bit about the universal motor, but because today we, we don't have time, so because it will take time, uh, there was a numerical problem, so it will take another like 15 to 20 minutes. So I am not going to discuss. So what I am going to do, like just including this slide, that is your syllabus. You don't need to look that uh, universal motor problem. Okay. So when I will be again re-uploading this slide on Ecosphere, I will be just putting that uh, exam information, and I will be showing. Sorry, I will be showing only this one, although. Already, I think last class I have showed. So I am not going to show you this numerical problem. So therefore, because I could not cover, so you don't need to look the universal motor problem. So everybody, is this fine? Perfect, yes. Yeah, okay. Because I, I, I could not cover, so I have, of course, I will not ask question about the numerical problem from the universal motor. But you need to know this thing that we are discussing. So with that, uh, I think some of you have next class. Um, does anybody have any questions, comment, anything? Dr. Ali, what time did you say you're going to be posting the exam? Sorry? What time did you say you're going to be posting the exam? Ah, so it will be available exactly at 9 a.m. 
so a li okay, little so bit like around 855 i will be uploading so exactly at 9 you can start exactly at 9 and then uh, last time to upload the scan version scan pdf version on dropbox by noon 12 pm so therefore i am giving you all like three hours 9 to 12. So therefore exactly at nine you can start so i i'll be uploading uh, under the tab exam a little bit before that nine and then uh, you all open that one from the e-course here exam two, and then you start writing the answer on your own pieces of paper and then uh, once you are done uh, you scan and convert into single pdf file and then upload definitely by 12. so therefore i would recommend each of you everybody please try your best to finish at the latest by 11 30 pm and then you proceed to the scanning and uploading so then you will not be running out of time on the other hand if you write until 11 55 then <laughs> that for the remaining five minutes is not enough to upload because this scanning will take time converting pdf and then uploading then you will be run out of time so therefore i am allowing you the long time three hours so the three hours is not for three hours is not for the only the writing. Three hours includes the writing plus is scanning plus successfully uploading. So therefore, everybody, please try your best to, to must finish by eleven thirty, and then you immediately proceed to the uploading. Otherwise, you will be running out of time. Okay, is this fine? Sounds good. Okay, so.